Okay, so the bishop looks great, but there were a few things I didn't get to say about the power of the inset tool, and I want to go over a few of those now. It really has nothing at all to do with extrusion other than preparing areas of your model for operations like, but certainly not limited to, extrusions. Its only function is to create new areas of flow to protect and control new shapes. And with a good understanding of it, you can model anything. And it's the Boolean operations which are causing so much trouble. They're sketching tools, really, to get your ideas out, but don't think that the models they create are the end of your work. They give you severely limited geometry and are virtually useless in animation, texturing, deformation, transparency, and they'll always place restrictions on how closely your models can be seen in the rendered images. Relying on Booleans to model is the 3D equivalent of finger painting. Let's take a look at a common Boolean operation and how you might want to go about remaking it properly. Let's start with a cube. There's one there, the default cube. Actually, I'm going to delete that and immediately add a mesh cube. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll go into edit mode and subdivide it twice. Then go out to edit mode and add another cube, which we'll use as a Boolean cutout. There it is, I'm going to subdivide this one twice as well and add a subdivision surface modifier to it. Apply that modifier and set it to smooth shading and that gives us a simple but interesting geometry to cut out. I'm going to scale it down, move it into position somewhere on the corner of our cube here, and that looks good. Actually, we might as well make it interesting. Let's add a subdivision surface modifier to our main cube and set that to shade smooth too. Now, with the big cube selected, I'm going to add a Boolean modifier over here in the modifier panel, and I'm going to use the eyedropper here to select the little cube as a cutout. Now, I'm just going to select both of these objects and duplicate them and move these ones over here so we can compare our results. Now I'm going to hide both of the little cubes, just so we can see the effect they're having as Boolean cutouts. And on the left-hand cube, I'm going to change the normals to Auto Smooth. I won't bother with that on the other one, because it's going to be a subdivision surface model, and we don't need to cheat anything with normals shenanigans. So you can see, this one has a nice smooth cutout, but really hard edges. Impossibly sharp. You can kind of cheat with weighted normals and lots of other tricks, but the flexibility is close to zero, and the overall topology is absolutely terrible. Let's turn on wireframe display for this one and we can see what we have. It's just awful. And that's only with one object cutting it. Now let me show you how easy it is to recreate this as a subdivision surface model and how we'll end up with infinitely more control and much lighter geometry and a model that's truly portable to move to any other piece of software. So if we tab to edit mode, let's just uh, use the little geometry that we have. So I'm going to alt click this loop near the cut that we can see to select it all around the mesh, and then I'm going to just press GG to slide it behind the cut shown by the Boolean. Just an arbitrary distance behind it, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to do the same for this loop, and then again for this one, just to move them up to match the cut shape. Now, if I go to face select mode, I can see I have these three faces around the cut. I can select the three of them just by shift clicking them, and again we'll see the power of the inset tool. I'm going to press I to inset these faces, and, and what a lot of people don't realize is that the inset tool can work across all three axes at the same time. And I'm just going to line up this new inset with uh, more or less the edge of the Boolean mess. And that was the important part. Really simple, but really powerful. Now I can just press X and select faces to delete these faces, which leaves us with this hole. And now I'm just going to fill in these faces, which is a really simple task. And it's the task of filling in faces which is really well worth practicing. An understanding of the F2 add-on and how it fills in faces is really important, and I'll go over that in another video. So, in point select mode, just select one of the corner points and press F, and then immediately right-click, and it'll put a face in exactly the right place. Oh, I can just delete the Boolean modifier now. It's no longer of any use to us. Now, change to edge select mode and select this top edge here. Press F, and then F again, and that's it. We filled in the hole. Filling in geometry is much easier than people seem to realize, it, and it's a skill that not enough people are using. We can turn off the edit mode switch in our subdivision surface modifier to see our shape. It's really simple. Now let's turn it back on, and we can see that we have this really soft edged cut around the corner. But we have all of the topology we need to recreate this other shape with just three simple, very logical, very controllable loops. So tap back to edit mode, and if I press Ctrl R, I can add a loop which surrounds this cut because of the inset that we made earlier. This will be our control loop, so you've seen me do it before. Let's right-click it and select Mark Seam. Turns it red, and now whenever this loop is selected just by alt-clicking it, I can always just press GG to tighten or loosen this curve around the shape without affecting anything else. Now it looks a little rounder in there than the Boolean one, so we probably need to add a, a couple of loops to change that. It'll help here if the loops you add are aligned to the straight edge between them by pressing R after you confirm the loop, and then pressing F until the loop goes straight. This is a good general rule, and I'll explain why in, in another video. For now, let's just recreate this shape. Do the same here. 
and then the same here, just to cover all three directions. It looks good, maybe I was a little softer, so I can always move these loops by alt-clicking on them, just pressing GG until it feels like the other one. How about that? Looks pretty close, and we have great edges around our cut, which we can control really easily. It's a really light geometry with loads of control over all of our curvature. It's made from all quads, and there are going to be no rendering issues at all. We don't have to mess around with normals, so this model can be used anywhere. The UVs are going to be really easy to map. We can add subsurface scattering, transparency, anything we want. It's a really good model. And of course, it's not just corners. We can inset any collection of faces. Just these two here is a really simple cut. Inset them, delete the faces, then rebuild the geometry inside. That's the tricky part, I suppose. You need to be comfortable filling in faces to make the insides. It's a really simple process once you get used to the rules and it takes just a few seconds. You really do need the F2 add-on installed and you really do need to understand exactly what it does. It's arguably the best add-on Blender provides. I can add my control loop in the border, mark it red, and we have individual control of the curvature of every cut we make. They can all be different if we want, or the same. It's all easy. There's no need to cheat with any normal calculations, which will invariably be incompatible with other software you might want to use. This model will act exactly the same way in every software and with every plugin. Let's move around and you can see we can choose any arrangement of faces. The real skill is in knowing how to rebuild the inside of the shapes. I think maybe a full video on that might be quite useful, so I make one of those. It's really simple once you get used to it. You do have to remember that the loops we're making go all the way around, so you have to be careful that they're not affecting other shapes and cutouts that you might uh, have, but generally they won't. And it's very easy to keep them out of the way of each other. Generally, we work from the outside to the inside of a mesh, so we make all the cuts around the corners and the edges and, and any faces which go right up to a corner or an edge. And then is a the time to start cutting out the holes in the middle. And then again, they're all protected by insetting them first to create their own little boundary which controls the curvature flowing over the curves which make them. We can grab groups of points and reshape them to anything we want. Maybe we can just use the circle tool here to turn this into a circle. We inset that, and it has its own curvature. At the bottom, we inset again inside holes to make flat surfaces. You don't have to, it's modeling. You can do what you want, but it's easy, and we have all the flexibility we need. And again, because it's logically arranged quads, and it is all quads, it'll handle any distortion really well. So I can add a, maybe a, a simple deform modifier and just kind of bend and twist it around just to show you that it'll tolerate anything, and we can zoom in really close. Things are very unlikely to go wrong. These modeling methods are safe and reliable. Unlike using the Boolean operations, which people are calling hard surface modeling. That's not hard surface modeling. That's just sketching. This is hard surface modeling. Okay, we should get on with the rook, but there's actually one more video I do want to make before we do that about extrusion, which is kind of the flip side of the coin from Booleans. And again, there's a bit of a misunderstanding about how extrusion works. So I'll, I'll just quickly deal with that and then we'll do the rook.